Michelangelo admitted, if people knew how hard I worked to gain my mastery, it wouldn't be so wonderful at all. In the same way, the true training method of parkour is often glossed over for large roof gaps for big tricks. Few outsiders truly <coughs> understand the nature of this sport. Parkour is defined as getting from A to B in the quickest, safest, and most efficient way possible. For the past two years, I've trained at Fight or Flight Academy under Chad Swatho, the head instructor of American Parkour and a longtime member of the tribe, a professional performance team. Through these experiences, I've learned that parkour is more than a sport. It's a lifestyle, built upon community, philosophy, and movement. Let's look at each of these. Parkour's movements come from many different backgrounds, including gymnastics, where parkour gets much of its power tumbling, breakdancing, where parkour gets many of its flow movements, and martial arts, where parkour gets many of its momentum transfers. This group of practitioners of parkour, also known as tracers, are very closely knit, providing many opportunities for collaboration and socializing. One example of this is parkourglobe.com, which allows one tracer to stay in the home of another when traveling, and currently offers accommodations in 58 different countries. In addition, parkour forums allow one tracer to tell others about possible training locations. The Parkour Spotter Light app alone has 8,500 marked spots worldwide. Finally, parkour meetups provide a great opportunity to meet and train with other traceers. Another important aspect of parkour is its philosophies. <clears throat> Raymond Bell was a French national born in Vietnam in 1939. He later became part of the elite French military firefighters, and he believed there should never be anyone in a burning building that you could not get to to save their life. And he developed the basic movements of parkour to accomplish this. Which brings us to the first philosophy. Parkour is not simply about A to B, but about getting one from any point to any point, and the self-progression that comes from doing so. I've seen this in my own life as well. When I first started training parkour, like any beginner, there was very little I could actually do. But I quickly adopt this mentality of setting goals and training to overcome them, even starting a log where I would write down goals and cross them off as I went. It wasn't until later that I realized I could apply this to other areas of my life. I used it to improve my other sports, like basketball, tennis, and my martial arts training. And then I took it even further. I realized I could use it on academics. I used it to help improve my study habits, my test taking skills, and my overall focus. Finally, I realized I could use it on me as a person be more kind, to be more patient, to be a stronger Christian. The next of Parkour's philosophies comes from when Raymond Bell taught the movements he had made to his son, David Bell, who then taught the movements to his friends, later to be known as the Yamakasi, the first true parkour group. They added the creativity and self-expression of a child that is still seen in the movements to this day. Many of Parkour's more flashy movements can be traced back to this origin. The most well-known aspect of parkour, by far, is its movements. One of the most common aspects being vaults. There are 20 basic vaults used in parkour. However, three of the most common are the speed vault, used to quickly traverse an obstacle, the Kong vault, generally used for a larger gap, and the dash vault, generally used for a higher obstacle. Another important area is bar work, usually split into precisions and laches. A precision has the athlete traversing across the top of the bars using their feet, whereas a lache has the athlete traversing beneath using their hands. Parkour landings can help keep the athletes safe throughout all that they do. Many people think landings are about being tough or overcoming the pain of a big impact. However, this is simply not the case. Fight Science analyzed Ryan Doyle, a top parkour athlete, as he took a 14-foot drop with a front flip. The impact he experienced was the same as you would experience doing a jumping jack. Finally, although more flashy than practical, parkour uses three basic flips. The front flip, the most difficult of the three basic flips, is also seen in many other tumbling disciplines. The back flip, which is the easiest of the three flips, is also used by other tumblers. However, tracers use a separate technique due to the absence of mats or a spring floor. And the side flip, which is unique to parkour and is utilized because of its ability to allow a tracer to flip without ever going directly over one's head. 
By looking at parkour's community, philosophy, and movement, one has a better understanding of the overall mentality. It is not about pointless danger. Gaining mastery over one's mind and body is the true goal of parkour. Michelangelo believed that if people knew how hard he worked, they wouldn't be as impressed by his results. But to a parkour athlete, the long days, weeks, and years of training are what make this sport great. <laughs>